Hey y'all, NC Survivors coming to you again with another Two Tip Tuesday. This time we're going to be talking about square lashing and tripod lashing. Now why square lashing and why do I kind of chuckle? Well, I had a feeling that last week's discussion on whipping and frapping were going to raise the question about square lashing. I, I just did. Um, so I'd already planned it, but the response was a little more overwhelming than I thought. Um, so we pushed up the timeline and we're going to do the square lashing now as opposed to in a few weeks. Um, what I have done, and I'm going to reposition the camera to get you kind of the, the, the zoom in so I can actually teach you how to do this because I'm not there with you. Okay. And so what we're going to do is try to do it that way. What I have also done is with my two sticks, uh, I've actually put Lincoln log cuts into them or square notches. And the reason being is so that they fit a little tighter in there and I can actually bind on itself without having to worry about it uh, rolling or anything like that. Uh, it actually goes in, lays flat, and then I can uh, bind it up with a square lash. Um, and the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need those two sticks. Uh, you do not have to cut notches in them, okay? You do not. In fact, the ones I had last week did not have notches in them. But you're also, for the tripod lash, you're going to need three sticks. Tripod right try leg three leg all right you're gonna need some cordage um, and I'm probably gonna need some more after I do the square lashing to do the tripod and a knife now the knife is simply so that you can go in and cut your cordage one other recommendation that I have is actually a lighter and there we go a lighter depending upon the cordage and the reason being is because with tarred bank line it melts the end with paracord it melts the end and all you're trying to do is just make sure that you're keeping all the pieces together not fraying apart so let me reposition the camera we're going to start with the square lash then we'll look at the tripod lash and then um, then we'll go from there okay so stay tuned for that all right folks so if you hear you know kids screaming in the background it's kind of uh the the last days of summer if you will uh, some kids playing over in the neighbor's uh, pool all right, so what do we start with? First, I start with an actual timber hitch. Uh, you can use a clove hitch, some people do, uh, and then the clove hitch, spin it, uh, just slide it over the top, makes it kind of easy. I do a timber hitch um, just simply because I like the amount of tag in that I can leave. Uh, you can see I've got a lot uh, still on here. And all you're doing is just twisting it up. If you're not real sure about a timber hitch, uh, look it up. Uh, but what it does do is, again, it gives me that nice tag in to work with. I put my Lincoln logs down, if you will. And then I take and I run my cordage through it. Now this will bind in on itself. Pull the cordage through. Set my logs down in style. Alright, and now tighten that up real well. Thank you. Alright, so now what I can do is I can either take and go this way or I can take and go this way. I prefer going against the loop. And, you know, somebody's probably going to comment, well, yeah, Bill, because that's probably what you're supposed to do, right? Uh, that's okay. I, I don't care. I, I haven't, this is not formal teaching here. Um, so I go under, pull all of my cordage through. And then uh, me being the person I am I actually bring it a little tight square it up a little bit square knot or square lashing and then what I have done is made one complete loop now let's go over this real quick okay so I did my timber hitch I brought it over against the loop I went down and underneath the bottom one over the top one under the bottom one and then I'll go back over the top one under the bottom one again keeping your cordage tight over the top one under the bottom one and it's going to be the same song as we go through i mean that's what it boils down to now one of the things you'll notice me doing is i'm actually tightening these up a little bit so you'll see that i've kind of put them next to each other making sure they tighten up over I'm oh, sorry under over under and then over now if you are short on cordage 
all right if you're short on cordage that's where the benefit of this Lincoln log cut comes because now I do not have to frap and you know the other side of it and keep this in mind when we start looking at frapping specifically going around is going to be a lot more difficult with the Lincoln log cuts because there's not enough space so the reason you know we talked about the reason they won't roll it makes it tighter and things of that nature I also do Lincoln log cuts so I don't have to use as much cordage and you're not going to frap okay so the Lincoln log cut actually tightens it down to where I'm not having to worry about specifically that looseness that's going to happen and I don't have to worry about the the log slipping out uh, from each other so it won't go it won't slip out and so the other part comes down to remember we talked about the tag in um, I'll take and tie that off uh, with just a simple overhand knot and then tighten that down and so you'll see that's now tightened down pretty well and it's got a good good cut a little bit of wiggle in it and that's fine um, if I was just doing Lincoln log I'd probably go uh, four maybe even five times as opposed to just the three but that's again that's me all right that's just the way I do it so again timber hitch over under over under over under and we keep singing the same song until we get it as tight as we want as broad as we want and then we tie it off with that loose end now in the end of it thank you mr mockingbird um, in the end of it what we're going to do is we can take and we've got an overhand knot I'm going to take and put another one in there put another one in there hopefully my fingers aren't getting too much of in the way and then I have the ability to just take my mora cut it cut it and then if I want to I can burn the ends Speaking of burn ends, I had some good barbecue yesterday. <laughs> all right, anyway. All right, so that is a square lash. Okay, y'all, so let's go ahead and start on our tripod uh, lashing. And if we look at the tripod lashing, there, you know, and you'll see a bunch of things on YouTube on how to do it without cordage and how to do it with a ring. And hey, that's fine, knock yourself out. However, uh, that's not always the case. Not always do I have a metal ring uh, in place. So what we're gonna do is the same thing we've done before uh, is we can actually go through with a timber hitch or I can use a clove hitch and we'll do, this time we're gonna do a clove hitch. Now keep in mind, uh, with the timber hitch that I used a while ago, if I let that unbind, and this was something I was noticing a while ago, is if I let it unbind or untwist, then it becomes nothing more than a lark's head knot, or a lark's head loop, if you will, um, and uh, can come undone. Now it will still hold, uh, it will still work, uh, for what we had it for, but keep that in mind as it becomes something that's totally different than uh, what we originally designed it for. Okay, so just as a by the way. All right, now what I've done is I've went ahead and started. Uh, I slipped my clove, clove hitch over, um, and then what I'm going to do is make it this way is I'm going to take my sticks and go and bring it to it as opposed to me running this cordage under it. Uh, and the reason being is because I wanted you to see this. All right, I started my, my hitch, I go under on the outside, then I come around and over, then I go under on the inside. And so what you're gonna probably do is have to run it down, uh, which is one of the reasons why uh, you'll probably see a couple of cuts in here to where I actually pulled off some of the, some of the stem uh, some of the different twigs or, or limbs, if you will, if it's bigger. Um, and then let's go back and then we'll go under and we'll go over. And then we'll go under. There we go. And so you'll see how it just kind of tightens in and pulls itself in as we do this. And then we continue to do the same pattern, um, you know, kind of like we went with over and under, over, under, over, under with um, the square lashing. You're doing the same thing over, under, over, under, over, under, but you're doing it uh, in a linear fashion versus in a square fashion. Okay, so that's what it is. You're actually doing a linear lash, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, of course, that may be the term. I don't know. Um, I just know how to do this stuff, guys. That's the way it goes. Uh, so we'll go over, under, and then tighten. And then we'll go over, under. There we go.
No. Well, that would be why that one didn't look like it was doing right. Go under. There we go. Now, I will tell you this. Tripods are great. One thing I dislike, um, and it's just me, is a uh, hey, tripod lashing starts driving me nuts after a while just because I'm starting to fight as it tightens up. I start fighting with the sticks. And um, I'm not talking about fighting someone else with sticks. I'm fighting with sticks, That's it, which is makes it a little more difficult. All right, and so you'll see I'm just bringing that down. And then I can bring it over one more time if I need to. So what you see, and let's, let's review it one more time, okay? So uh, what I did is I started in the middle went outside came over so I went under the outside one came over it under the middle one back up and over the top one or the last one underneath back over under back over and the list goes on again same song doing the same thing and then when it's over when it's over and I've pulled it tight then what I do is I actually put an overhand uh, knot in it And the only reason I do that, the only reason, is to tighten it down. Now, okay, we talked about uh, frapping last time and doing it with a tripod. With a tripod, I don't have to necessarily because you're wanting to make sure you've got enough leverage to make things move and slide uh, as it needs to. And so you don't have to. However, in my tripod, I actually have done it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do it for those of you that want to and all I do is go under and come up and then do the same thing so over come on all right so you see I've gone down here come up on the other end and then all I do is tighten that up okay that is frapping on a tripod so Pull it, and then pull it. Good thing I don't need my lighter right now. See, I went over, down, coming up. As I tighten it up, it pulls it tighter. And then I can take my toggle and pull on it, or I can just pull on it tight here. Now, uh, the reason I'm not using a toggle is because when I'm done, uh, this is gonna be nothing more than my coffee filter, so uh, not a big deal. All right, and then I'll go over, and then do the same thing. Um, but the difference is, is from there, I actually do it like I'm doing this and then come up from the bottom. In this case, uh, I may have stopped differently when I was doing the regular lashing. So, all right guys, that's it. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, not a difficult task. It's just, in my opinion, linear lashings become a pain in the um, but we'll use it that way since we do have kids watching and then I'll take and do the same thing so I've gone around this one going this way right bottom to top bottom to top um, and actually going underneath it this way is probably the proper way um, and then same thing uh, when we got to the bottom as I went uh, down up down up and again going uh, in this fashion so pointing that way um, and then what I'll do is I will put another square knot in that, or sorry, an overhand knot in that. Um, I can tie a square knot. Not gonna hurt anything. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and put in another overhand, so a double overhand. Guys, you'll hear me spout off knots and things like that. Um, I don't expect anybody to remember them. The only reason I know them is simply because I continually do it. Um, and then what I do is I cut this off. Now, then I search for my lighter that dropped on the ground. Fantastic. Uh, there you go, look at that. There's just some fun stuff. <laughs> All right, um, again, doesn't have to. I can actually warm this whole thing up and it'd melt on itself anyway because it's tarred bank line. So that's it, guys. Um, that is my uh, square lashing, if you will, that you saw on the other sticks and then my 
um, tripod lashing on the three sticks I have here. Can't tell you how many times I've stopped, started, and deleted just because of planes today. It's been ridiculous. Anyway, hey guys, there you have it. Uh, we did the two lashings today. We did a square lashing and we did the tripod lashing. Let's just kind of review one thing. Uh, with the square lashing, we did the Lincoln Log Cuts. You can frap with it. It's up to you. It's going to have a little bow to it, but it does bind it tighter. I don't when I use Lincoln Log Cuts simply because it still binds down uh, and tightens up pretty well as far as uh, where the, the two flat pieces line up together. Up to you your choice and how much cordage you have in what project you're making is another example. If I wanted to do a backpack, uh, this works perfect. If I wanted to do a chair, if I wanted to do a table, I might put a little bit more, a uh, little bit more to it. And then I told you I'd also tighten up the, uh, the actual Lincoln Lock cut so that they fit the notches a little bit better. Um, with the tripod, uh, we started with a clove hitch and then went over, under, over, under and included the frapping in that. And the reason for that was just to make it tighter. I wanted it to last a little bit longer. And then my tripod that's on the camp, uh, over the campfire, it is uh, frapped. So it stays and retains, uh, retains its tightness over a period of time. So special shout out to Matt and Tim up at Reliance Leatherworks uh, for the bag. I needed something to transport my stuff, uh, but I needed it a little bit smaller. So my canteens in here, my, my water bottles in here, my rope, uh, the leather that's under the bottom, all the stuff you see was actually in the bag with the exception of the sticks. So, uh, hey guys, thanks, appreciate it, worked great. Uh, what do you need for the projects? You need the sticks that you're going to lash, of course, uh, a design in your brain if it's going to be something bigger than just a tripod, and then you're going to need cordage and you're going to need um, a knife. So in this case, I've got the more basic, uh, not a problem whatsoever. Hey guys, I also recommend a lighter in our case and always a big lighter in order to uh, to increase their survivability. That's what it boils down to. So, hey, thanks for all your likes, your comments, and your subscribes. Don't forget to share this out. Don't forget to comment. Still looking for more ideas. Thanks for all the ideas that have come. Uh, this was one of them. Hey, we want to see you actually do it. Fine. Um, so, I did. Thank you for the comments and suggestions. Uh, always need more. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And more importantly than the subscribers, to be honest with you, is that thumbs up and saying that you liked it. If you want more of these, I need more thumbs up. I need to know that you liked it. I need to know this is what more, more of what you want. And then comment down below. Don't forget to check out the other two Tip Tuesdays. Don't forget to subscribe. And hey, we have the new instructionals, which this will be part of. So you may have seen some of them. I'm actually putting the link with them right down below. So. Don't forget to check it all out, guys. Hey, thanks for everything you do. And until then, use your instincts to survive. Thanks for watching.